Errol Spence Jr. calls himself the big fish, but I'm going to call him the big fundamental like the all-time great Tim Duncan due to Spence's all-around textbook base of moves and mechanics. When Spence gets in the pocket, he's still fundamentally sound, but it's a whole different ball game. Since he's fighting Pac-Man next, who's a southpaw, I figured I'd go back six years and break down how he had all his success against the last southpaw he faced, Chris Van Heerden. This is, of course, the younger Spence, who has since been even more fine-tuned. Shout out to Christopher Williams, who requested this particular fight. Let's get into it. If Arrow has a signature move offensively, it's most certainly this 4-3 to the body. He's perfected the approach from the outside and the mechanics of the sequence, leaving a power jab out for control to shuffle inside, then simultaneously throwing the four hook which loads the opposite side while releasing control to throw the pendulum three hook. Spence is not the fighter you want to retreat to the ropes and shell up against. He's a high level inside bruiser who sits down on mostly every shot so they all have bad intentions. He forces holes in the guard using hooks and uppercuts and pendulum, loading the opposite side after each strike. You won't have this position without getting bruised up fighting with Arrow Spence. Here it's mostly textbook but later on we get to see the inside tricks in Arrow's bag. But nice control again for the signature 4-3. Although I don't think the continuous use of a textbook high guard is the best at defensive systems, Arrow clearly has a highly educated active high guard, meaning he's not just sticking the shield up, he's parrying and catching jabs, shifting the shield according to the punch thrown, and he's using his footwork to change positioning and distance. This wouldn't be an Errol Spence video if we didn't talk about his power jab. For the big fundamental, everything starts behind a jab. Perfect form off the back foot, left hand tucked on the left side of his chin, jab shoulder protecting the right side of his chin, fully extended, powerful southpaw jab. The success of Errol's jab is the difference between the Porter fight and the Garcia fight. The power jab is most definitely Errol's most important weapon. Let's get into the tricks. When Arrow really goes to work on the inside, he stands above the rest. He uses a series of high level guard manipulations, including pinning and or framing and control for dominant position to keep his hands free while controlling the opponent's guard and forcing openings. In my humble opinion, this is what makes Arrow special.
jitterbugging. But now he can only lay up against the ropes. This seems like it could be a matter of time. And you know what? Enough's enough. Dove back in, and it, it didn't last much more than 20 or 30 seconds after that break. Van Heerden just holding on for dear life. Against Pac-Man, I think Arrow should look to control the space between them with his traditional guard and, of course, utilizing that jab often while mixing in feints. That way, Pac-Man can't easily time the jab and has to get through punch traffic to attack. I highly doubt Pac-Man gives Arrow the chance to beat him up on the inside, but if he does, it'll be brutal. So control the action with the jab and feints, then turn up the heat in the later rounds. Thanks for watching.